What's good guys, it's your boy Jesus B and today I'm going to be showing you how to increase your bench. I'm in Grit City Gym. This is a hole in the wall gem in the Bronx that I didn't even know existed. So it's super loud in here. So for most of the video, I'll be doing a voiceover at home, but I'm gonna be showing you about 10 tips on how I increase my bench from only being able to lift like 135 pounds to over 250 pounds. Let's go. I'm going to go into detail on 12 different tips that's going to help you increase the strength of your bench. I'm also going to give you the exact sets, reps, tempo, and rest period, but only for strength. If your goal is to build muscle, rep ranges are gonna be a little bit different. So tip number one is gonna be one a lot of bodybuilders or gym bros overlook, and that's stretching before your workout. Stretching for me has made a significant difference on how long and how durable I am through the set. So as here you can see on the screen, I'm stretching my pec. That's one of my favorite pec stretches to do. Also warming up the rotator cuff, which here's a little tip. The rotator cuff is the stabilizer, like the infraspinatus and supraspinatus, not to get too clinical, but those are the stabilizing muscles when you're actually bench pressing. So you wanna make sure that your shoulder is warmed up. So Tip number one is stretching and warming up your shoulders every time you bench. Three things you want first. Wrist wraps, belt, and some clips. All right, tip number two is going to be one of the most important tips on this list. And that's going to be focusing on the concentric portion of the repetition. The concentric portion is basically the portion of the rep when you're lifting the bar up and your pec is tightening. So you want to be explosive in the concentric part of the rep. So remember, slow on the way down, explosive on the way up. How slow should you go on the eccentric? So the concentric portion is when your muscle is tightening up. The opposite of that is when the muscle is lengthening, which is called the eccentric portion of the rep. What I like to do a little rule of thumb is count to three Mississippi. So as the weight is coming down, as you can see here, I'm counting to myself. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, explode up. This is going to get you so sore and it's going to increase your bench so much. So that's gonna be the tip number three is slowing down the eccentric portion of the repetition. Let's move on to tip number four, which is including plyometric push-ups into your regimen. You should be trying to incorporate plyometric push-ups at least two times a week in your regimen to increase your bench press and as you can see here it almost replicates the bench press and that exploding concentric portion of the rep because you're pushing yourself off of the ground so including plyo push-ups into your regimen is going to be tip number four tip number five including floor press floor presses are really good to focus strictly on the pushing up portion. You can literally strictly focus on just the concentric portion of the rep while exploding up. And that's gonna also help with your sticking point. We all have a sticking point when a weight gets too much and depending on how much you've been training with strength is going to determine if you move beyond that sticking point or you fail and you're not able to move the, the weight. Tip number six, it's using leg drive. Now, there's a benefit to not using leg drive in that you are incorporating more upper body strength to be able to lift the weight. So if you ever seen lifters lift their legs and focus on benching, it's because they're trying to increase their upper body strength. But in the cases of powerlifting meets, competitions, you'll always see that the lifter is pulling their legs all the way back, increasing that arch in their lower back which then limits the range of motion, 
which is basically just like shortening how far your arms have to move to lift the bar to be able to lift the weight. So if you are gonna go for a PR, I would definitely suggest that you use leg drive. This is uh, another big mistake that I see a lot of new lifters do. They're not choosing the right bar path, so they're basically just lifting the bar up and lifting the bar down, straight up, straight down. Problem with that is that you're really gonna irritate your deltoids and your rotator cuff doing that. So to try to limit the tension on your shoulders, what I always suggest is bring the bar down to your sternum. And as you can see in the footage there, I'm showing you where the bar path is. So it comes down like right below my chest and then I drive it right back over my chest. Not so far that like I'm going to be on my shoulders. That's going to save your shoulders a lot of pain in the future. Tip number eight. Again, this is one of those things like using leg drive that I only recommend if you're going for a PR and that's gonna be going with a wider grip to decrease the range of motion with the bar. So just like when you're bringing your legs back and arching your back, if you go wider with the, with the bar, you, your arms don't have to go as far down to bring the weight all the way down versus if your arms are right in front of you, your elbows have to drive way further back to bring that bar all the way down to your chest. So if you're gonna go for a PR, I would definitely suggest going with a wider grip on the bar. Tip number nine. I recommend wide grip and close grip with the incline bench. And you're gonna to wanna to do half of your set wide grip and half of your set close grip. And then you're gonna still wanna go explode off with the concentric and three seconds on the eccentric. So you wanna bring all these tips together to give yourself the best chance to lift as much weight as possible. Another thing that a lot of not so experienced lifters fail to realize is how much your back comes into play when you're bench pressing. When you're bench pressing, you're almost pinching your shoulder blades into the bench and you're driving your shoulders back. So if you have strong lats that are able to keep your back in that arched position, you're gonna be able to lift more. So incorporating the lat pull down in your push-pull splits, which I'm assuming most of you are already doing, is going to be uh, tip number 10. Tip number 11. This is going to be just bench more. There's nothing in life that you're gonna become better at if you don't do it more. If you wanna be a better baseball player, you gotta swing the bat more. If you wanna be a better basketball player and shoot more threes, you gotta just do it more. So I would recommend that if you want to really increase your bench, to do it at least two to three times a week and make sure you have a buffer in between each of those days. If you wanna increase your bench and that's a priority for you. Tip number 12 is going to be consistently test your one rep max. Now, I've done a video on how you can test your one rep max, but just to give you guys extra value, after I go over the last tip, I'm going to quickly show you how I tested my bench press one rep max and then also show you what my new one rep max is. You definitely want to test your one rep max at least one time per month. So I'm gonna give you the exact value to help you guys just in case you're not sure of how much you should be doing, how much weight you should be pushing. I'm gonna put this on the screen, make sure you jot it down so you can incorporate it in your own program. This is just strictly if you want to gain strength. You're gonna to wanna to be doing one to five reps, no more than five reps, with four to six sets at 85% to 100% of your max. No less than 85% of whatever your max is and the tempo in which you should be doing those repetitions is explosive. Those are all my tips on how I personally increase my bench. Now there's a bunch of other things that you can do. Obviously you need to eat more because if you're a twig like I was, super skinny, you need to consume more calories to lift more weight. That's just thermodynamics. If you want to be able to exert more energy to push and do more, you need to take in more energy through calories. Before we end this video, here is me testing my morning rep max. Tell me what you think.
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, if you found any value in it, which is really the, the intention that I had with this video and videos like this, please let me know in the comments. I really want to help you guys. I know what it's like to feel insecure in your own body. I know what it's like to feel like you're not sufficient and you just want to get stronger, you want to get bigger. So if this video helped you, please like and comment. And most of all, subscribe because we're going to keep on pumping out the most valuable and entertaining fitness content on YouTube. And as always, until next time, f*** your insecurities. Peace.